And now we're going to hear about these seven projects. And at the end of this, you're going to go to a link and we're going to ask you to evaluate each of them in terms of the millifullers or the thousandths of a fuller uh, that you think these projects are worth. When you do this, um, not all of these projects are, are absolutely deployed yet. Um, what I'd like you to do is to uh, uh, measure their impact as if they um, as if they were completed. So you're not scoring them based on what they are today, but what they would be if they were deployed and ready. Now, this is the first of um, seven projects that you're gonna see. All right, um, well, let's see. Hi, I'm Loria, um, and I'm gonna be talking about VentMon, public inventions uh, inline ventilator test fixture and monitor. Uh, Rob's already given a lot of great background um, to the project so far, so I'll be pretty brief. Um, let's see. I joined the project uh, in March, sort of things were it was sort of the height of the open source ventilator movement. Um, I met Rob and Jeff through you know, a conference hosted by Arduino that was intended to highlight and sort of give support to teams working on uh, pandemic related projects. Um, I think as Rob has highlighted, this particular project has been the stepping point for a lot of others and bigger ideas uh, led by public invention and others, which is super cool. So first, just going to give brief motivation of Ventmon, overview of the device, uh, we'll look at some of the physical components, and then sort of the design iterations since the first Ventmon. So again, Rob has covered most of this, but there was sort of this explosion of teams working to create low cost ventilators in March. Um, this was awesome, but there wasn't a ton of thought about how to validate and test these uh, devices. As many of us know, jumping straight into FDA approval for something like this is not realistic. Um, so the goal here was to build an equally open source and efficient test fixture to help support these teams. Um, some of the sort of key things we set out to do from the start is that this design would be um, very modular and easy to assemble. Um, and again, as Rob mentioned, we knew that we needed to make sure it, it made it possible for distributed teams to communicate. Um, so to do testing across large distances and uh, you know work, work effectively between time zones and places. So Inside the vent lawn, we uh, measure a few key components, or we take some key metrics of the inspiratory airway. So we use a flow sensor, again, as Rob mentioned, to measure the flow of air through the airway. We measure pressure, and we measure the pressure differential between the ambient pressure in the room and the pressure in the airway. We also measure the temperature of the air in the airway, its humidity, and the fractional oxygen of the air in the airway. Um, all this data is collected and sent to a data lake, um, which will be discussed later on. And then it's analyzed using the software that Rob mentioned earlier to sort of um, create the key clinical metrics that you would see in a ventilator in a hospital. And I'm not even going to try to remember what all those acronyms are. Um, so, so yeah, and this, this is diagram is just a sort of outline of where you would see the vent mon in a system. So between the ventilator and the patient, um, ideally. And again, within that broader ventilator ecosystem, it fits in that sort of testing category that, that Rob highlighted. Um, yeah. So this is a, a look inside the box of, I think this might be the second iteration of vent mon that we created. So to do all the processing and communication between the sensors, we used an ESP32 microcontroller, and we just connected that to an ethernet shield made by Particle Labs. Um, and then we had an additional shield you can see on the right that allowed all the sensors to be connected via an I squared C bus. So it's all very simple. And you know the amount of data that we're actually generating is quite small in comparison to, you know, many other things you can think of um, in your life. So let's see, the pressure sensors we used were a particular type of Bosch pressure sensor. 
And then um, we use a variety of sensorian flow sensors, which I'll, I'll talk about in a little bit. And then uh, for oxygen sensing, we use um, and a sensor from Teledyne, which is actually a sensor you'd find in like a dive shop, uh, which was kind of cool. Let's see. So yeah, this, um, so the design you see here, functionally, it worked well. It achieved all of our goals. It was easy to build um, and it measured everything we needed to. But from a design perspective, it wasn't great. It's pretty fragile and it took a while to assemble. Um, so we know we needed to improve some of the physical components. The two big, big things we identified right off the bat were creating a custom PCB to sort of be able to embed all the sensors in a more contained way, um, and then a 3D printed HASI. So the two images here are courtesy of Ben Coombs, and they're super exciting in my opinion. Uh, this is sort of the next version of Ventmon, which I think is version 0 0.4. So you can see there on the right, we have a small PCB inside this, um, this plastic housing. And you can see the flow sensors and uh, the oxygen sensor there as well. So this is, uh, this is the new Ventmon. It doesn't exist yet, but it's, it's coming soon. Um, we're pretty excited. Um, and then let's see, here are a couple other sort of steps in that design process. So the third version of Ventmon, Ventmon that we made here includes the custom printed circuit board. Um, so basically, again, this allowed us to get all of our sensors in one spot and it really decreased the assembly time um, needed to build one of these devices. And then on the left is another awesome photo from Ben where he took um, the second version of the device and embedded, uh, you know, created a case um, and put it inside. So. I think Rob showed a photo earlier of this very long hose trailing off of the, the enclosure box, which is pretty unwieldy um, and I would say unsafe in a, a clinical situation. So the, the case that Ben has made for us is really awesome and much more compact. So as you can see, the project is still very, oops, sorry about that. Oh no. Can everyone see that? Okay. Yeah, the project is still very much alive. Um, the work is current. We have requests for Ventmon still coming, I think, Rob. Um, and I think we're everyone's really looking forward to, to getting these next versions out. 